Hello everyone, Porcelain here on Manufactured and welcome to a very different kind of video. This one is hopefully coming out on time as it is uh, significantly spookier than uh, some of the other videos on this channel and I'm really excited about it and it's also been a very expensive video to make so I'm hoping this all turns out well and that you guys like it. Uh, if you like the video, please engage with it. Uh, write in the comments below, give it a like, give it a dislike, either way, uh, help me out because this is probably the most money I've ever spent making a YouTube video. Um, so what I have here, as you've probably seen in the thumbnail, is a wonderful cardboard box. Inside of this box is another box. So <laughs> this uh, these are the Series 1 um, Freenies Hidden Dissectables by Mighty Jacks. Uh, I bought this case literally um, a few hours after they went on sale for pre-order, uh, just because I wanted to be sure they didn't sell out, and because as soon as I saw the pictures of these toys, I knew that I had to have them. They like mix two things that are just integral to my personality. They're creepy and they're cute uh, and they're ponies and soon there won't even be a gen 4 of pony to make toys out of anymore. So I really had to grab these uh, and this case here, this is a full case um, of them. So this case here contains 12 mystery figures and it cost me uh, $200 and then $40 in um, like to get it over the border in duties uh, to get it here to Canada. So this little box, oh, it's upside down. This little box here cost $240 um, to, to get it here and also to pay for it. And it's a lot of money. I, I, I never spend this amount on new toys, honestly. And it's kind of, kind of really nerve wracking. It's also kind of exciting. Um, but I hadn't really spent the same amount on thrifting this year as I usually do, what with uh, everything going on in the world and there not really being uh, garage sales and not being able to go into thrift shops. So with that money, I've put it into this and we are going to open it together. So this box contains 12 different figures uh, and they are mini figures. Uh, if you bought just one figure on their own, it costs about $12. The box costs $200. That's, these are Canadian prices because I am from Canada. Um, so one little mystery figure on its own would cost you $12, but they're mystery figures, so you're not guaranteed to get the full set. Now, in this box, I am guaranteed to get the base set of figures, which are uh, the main six ponies, um, but then there are three variant figures, which are not at all guaranteed. I'm not even guaranteed to get one in here. I really hope we do because I want to see the clear uh, plastic that they use for the toys, the clear sparkly plastic. I really want to know the quality of that. So I'm hoping we get one in here, but uh, if we don't, uh, that's at least I'm getting the main six and uh, who knows what I'm going to do with all these doubles but uh, I'm really excited to have these just like kicking around on my desk. I am so excited to open them. So we're gonna look at these. I'm going to assess them for quality, any paint defects, like anything like that. I'm gonna do a really in-depth look at them. And then behind me, as you can see, I already have some other pony toys so we can compare sizes and other stuff like that. The one other thing I wanna say, I know this is a big, like a long intro. The one other thing I wanna say before we open this is um, these are not like the other kinds of toys I have collected and displayed on this channel. These are not intended for play. They are intended just for display. They're made for adult collectors. They are not um, your run-of-the-mill play line pony. They're not meant to be that. Um, so I'm assuming their quality is going to be top-notch and uh, I'm really hoping. I'm really really hoping. So with that said, we're going to rip into this box. Actually, I'm not going to rip it. I have scissors. Alright, so... Let's get this plastic off. And I'm going to switch to the desk at some point so you can get close-ups of all of them, but I just want to get this 
whoa, this big box open. Ugh. There we go. And I believe this had to ship from Singapore, I wanna say. Singapore or Germany, I know it was a German company that they were shipping through. Um, but yeah, so here is the box without any extra plastic. It is really pretty. This is sort of the box that you would see on a store shelf if you went into a store and uh, were buying these. It has perforations. So I'm going to, let's see, right off the bat, just gotta say, I've gotten this side open, but it is really difficult to rip through this and especially without hurting it. Okay, well, that was all for nothing because I can just pop up this piece. And it's open! This is what the tops of the boxes look like. There are two rows of six. And this is supposed to be able to fold down and become a display. But maybe I'm just gonna keep this box this way. So if I take out one of these little ones. Oh, okay, so they're really shallow. So this is what one box looks like. It has the My Little Pony logo on the top. I really hope this is in focus. Something stopped my face. It has the artwork on the side, the mystery figures on one side, and the six known figures. Um, the logo for this line again, and then it has the Freeney and uh, Hasbro on the bottom. And then it's just closed with a little piece of tape. It's not really anything. So I'm gonna open up this one here and then I think we'll switch down to the desk or we'll switch down afterwards and look at each one individually. Okay, the box pops open. I wonder if I can get all this tape off so the box is still nice. The box is like a, um, the cardboard's coated. As you can see, it's kind of shiny, so it should hold together nicely. And then inside, we have, oh. There's a little card. There's a small mystery package. This is really strange. This is just a silver little packet at the bottom. So I'll have to figure that out. And then there's the bag, presumably with our figure in it. Um, is there a tear strip? There is, there is a, a area to tear. There's also a teeny tiny hole in the bag. Can you see through it? No, I can't see through it. Um, yeah, so this is gonna be the real tell of uh, what these are like. And if I'm going to like them, I really hope I do. I really hope I do. This is so expensive. There we go. The package is open. I'm going to let you guys have the first peek at who's in there. Can you see? Oh my goodness. Okay, this is a surprise. Um, wow. Um, I wasn't expecting this. And that's pretty amazing. So I was hoping to get one of the, there are three chaser figures you can get in the series. Two of them are sort of a translucent sparkly plastic and one of them is a hard plastic. And it is this one. And this one's the rarest one in the box. So we got the rarest chaser figure. Now I was really, really hoping to get a sparkly one and we might still, uh, but Given that we got one chaser, that's already amazing. Um, it comes with a cute little base. And this one is Rainbow Dash as a Wonder Bolt. And I obviously didn't mention this before, but the whole gimmick to these is that they are half skeletons and half the pony and adorable. And it's really well protected because it's in this hard, plastic case so its wings can't break but they're 
probably, um, actually, her suit's metallic. She's metallic. Okay, we're really going to need to look at this on the desk. So here's the figure, here's the stand, and then we will look at her, have a look down on the desk. So, here she is. The packaging is... Oh, thick enough in almost all of the places except for these little corners. Um, so I'm really glad that they did this sort of like uh, formed clamshell pack just to protect these figures because they are pretty pricey. Um, and I said before that they were uh, $12 a piece. It's actually $13. It's $12.99, at least here in Canada. Um, so let's look at her normal side first. She does, it seem have an eye that's painted on under her goggles. I don't know if you can see that there, but it, it definitely looks like her eye is still painted on under her goggles, which is really cool. She has her little cutie mark printed onto her flank on the outside of her jumpsuit, and the jumpsuit has uh, its metallic with little lightning bolts going down the sides. It is the classic Wonderbolt suit. Um, this one's wearing goggles, but she is in the same pose as the one before, and you can see the same skeleton mold underneath the goggles for this one as well. Here she is viewed from the front. This one really doesn't want to focus. Camera! Is it because of the background? There we go. Really doesn't want to focus. So taking a look at the skeletal side here, um, this sort of paint doesn't seem to scuff off or anything. She has one sort of shiny spot on her tail, uh, which is a small defect. I don't think I can rub that off and I don't really want to hurt the figure trying. Uh, she has another little paint defect right here, uh, but I think, yeah, I can just take that right off, so that's fine. Uh, aside from that, it's pretty cute. Uh, she has what I thought was a shine in her goggle. Maybe it's meant to be, but it m also might be a an imperfection right there. So I think there might be a few imperfections with this figure, but I do like that they carried the metallic paint around. The imperfections you can't really tell from afar at all. Uh, and <laughs> I'm still like, she is really cool looking. She is really cute. And I'm glad that the jumpsuit was metallic because that wasn't something that you could tell on the website when ordering these figures. So for our first figure, I am really, really happy with this. This is really cute. She has little indents in two of her hooves for her stand, but as I assumed, she can stand on her own. We'll see if all of them can stand on their own. Uh, in here is her stand. Um, and it has a little Freeney verified logo, lo logo, logo on the bottom. If you peel it, uh, it says Hasbro and Mighty Jacks underneath. I'm gonna leave that on there though, because I don't really mind it being on there. And I wanna keep these guys with all their packaging and stuff because they're a little bit pricey and they are collectibles. So there she is on her stand. They don't fit entirely perfectly. At least this one isn't. She kinda wants to rock on one hoof or the other, but she does stay on her stand. Uh, the stand is just a hard plastic, uh, whereas the figure is a bit of a softer plastic. She's a little more malleable. I wouldn't want to uh, squish too much of her though, because I really don't want to hurt the figure. I actually really, really like this one. This one's really it's really cool looking. I'm glad that we got the chaser figure because, yeah, I the Wonderbolt Rainbow Dash on the website didn't look as impressive, but this one is really impressive looking. That's a really impressive little figure. And they are really small. Um, this one's about the size of my hand, the size of my palm, but uh, still really nice quality for this little figure. And I'm glad she can stand on her own. Now, these bags, you'll see in a minute, have uh, a little card. We can open this one. So, this bag here, we shall open. 
and it has just a little cardboard square saying Wonder Dash from the uh, Wonder Dash saying Rainbow Dash Wonder Bolts on it. Oh, with the My Little Pony logo on the back, and that it's Freeney Hasbro and Mighty Jacks all working together. Um, and I like the original uh, design and everything where it comes from. So this is going to stay with our figure um, in her box. But she is really, really cool looking. I'm really happy about that. For our next one, here is their box. Oh no, this tape's not ripping properly. I'm really trying to protect these boxes because they're so cute. So. Same deal with this box. We have a little package. We have this little thing. And we have a card. So we have these to open. I'm going to open the figure first. peek who's in there. It is the normal Rainbow Dash. Cool. So our first two are Rainbow Dash and like I said before we are guaranteed to get all the base main six ponies like this and I'm so excited to have them all displayed. She looks really angry and cool um, here. Angry or determined. So we'll have a look down on the desk. There's her stand. Again it's just a cute little heart with uh, some bits uh, some decorative swirls. So we're gonna look at that one again back down at the desk. Taking a look at our second figure which coincidentally is also a Rainbow Dash so we can even compare the two. Uh, here she is in her little protective packaging. There's just two little snaps. It's very easy to get open so you won't hurt your toy while you're opening it. She has a great little pose. She looks very determined. Cutie marks on there. Paint is good on this side so far. She is looking pretty good on this side, so let's flip her over and see her spooky side. Here is the dissected side. Uh, I like that the eye, the, 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 the eye socket part of the skull sort of matches the expression on the other side. I did think though that the teeth on these figures, because uh, they are presented as like sort of teeth um, on the website, on the 3D models, I did think that they'd be a little bit more pronounced. Maybe that's just this figure. We'll see with the other ones. I did hope they'd be a little more pronounced. Uh, but no, she's a really, really good looking figure. Um, I don't see any defects on this one. Her tail paint is just fine, unlike the last one. And this one looks to be in really, really good shape. If I look at this one versus the Wonderbolt version, uh, the bones on the Wonderbolt version actually look slightly darker too than the bones on this version. That's interesting. So this is how they look together side by side. That's the difference on that side. And then obviously on this side, a bigger difference. But that is really, really cool. Super cool little figures. I approve. I approve so far. So far, so good. But we will have to go and open up more and see how they look. Also, my nail is already super chipped. I'm sorry. I, I just painted these today for you guys. Oh, I just painted them and I'm already a mess. But let's go open some more. All right, third box. Here we go. Oh my goodness. You paint your nails and then you ruin them opening tape. Um, and then you have to paint them again. It's okay, I literally only paint my nails for you guys and uh, for playing D&D online with my friends now, so it's not a big deal. Third box. This is so exciting. I never, like, 
Like there's a lot of mystery to the openings I do, uh, the thrifted openings and stuff I do, but there's an extra excitement with this and also a lot of nervousness just because of the price of these and uh, presumed quality and everything. All right, so next pony. I think I see a flash of yellow. And I do. This is Applejack. And first impressions, um, she's just as cute as the other ones. She's looking a little bit fuzzy in a couple spots, um, which isn't great, but once I take her out of the plastic, I will be able to tell more. And we will look at her again, again, down at the desk. So for our third up close look, we have whoop, Applejack. If I can ever get her out of her packaging. There we go. Oh, her, she's also got a little piece of tape on hers to keep it together. That was not the case with Rainbow Dash, but I'm assuming that's to protect this little bit of her tail here. All right, so opening her up. Here's how she looks out of her box. Her skeleton is yellow. What? It's yellow. It's yellow like her mane and tail. Um, no, oh, it's yellow on the box too, so I guess that's intentional. It's got sort of, if you can see in the box right here, she's got a yellowish tinge, whereas Rainbow Dash, oh, it has a white. Interesting, so their skeletons are colored a little bit like them. Okay, so that is intentional. That's good to know. She does have the more pronounced teeth, which I really like. And her eye is sort of following the shape of the one on the other side, which is nice. The first side, see how, what I meant by fuzzes? She has a little bit of paint defect on the tail. And she has these little bits of plastic, of extra plastic on her that I don't think are supposed to be there at all. Um, which is a shame. I'm assuming these were 3D printed and that's just part of the 3D print process. Also, the inside of her ear is not that nicely painted on. But aside from that, her hat is adorable. She looks pretty cute. Uh, I really like the shape of the skull on this one and the colors of the guts work really well. Um, with Applejack's natural color palette, the cutie mark is perfect. Her freckles, very cute. The eyes printed on very nicely. All in all, a nice little figure. Does she stand without her base? <gasps> no, she doesn't. Oh no. I hoped these would, maybe if I stretch just a little bit. You can stretch these just slightly gently. I would be very careful with them though. No, she is too top heavy because of her hat, so she will need her base. Let's get that open. Here is her base. And come on. Come on. Applejack. Have a hole in your hoof. Maybe it goes the other way. I don't know if she's going to fit on her base, guys. All right, well, I did get her on there. It was a little bit harder to squish her onto her base than the other one. I had to be a little more forceful than I would have liked, but she is on there. That's how she looks on the base, and she does stand with it, which is why they come with these bases. I wish her skeleton was just a slightly lighter yellow so it doesn't look the same color as her hair, um, but the sculpt is really nice, and I think she makes a really nice figure. And with that, we will look at the fourth figure. This one was number three. So three ponies in, I'm already very happy uh, so far. And I'm just like, I just wanna see them all. I wanna, I wanna get a little glimpse of all of them and see what I'm going to get. Um, it's gonna be nerve wracking opening the last few boxes if we don't get any of the shiny ones. I just, I one, I'd like to have one of the shiny ones, but number two, I really want 
I really hope that we get one just because I want to be able to show you guys the quality and see it for myself to see if I can recommend them uh, if you get a chaser figure that isn't the Wonder Bolt Rainbow Dash. I am really happy with the Wonder Bolt Rainbow Dash though. So, box number, box number four. Same stuff in the bottom. And obviously we aren't going to open up the little silver packages uh, first. If you get one of these, don't open up the silver package on the bottom first because you'll know who you get. Um, so that's good to know. And uh, whoa, that's a deep tear. Who's our pony? Do I see purple in there? I do see purple. I was thinking from the viewfinder it was going to be Twilight, but instead it's Rarity, and they put Rarity in a sitting pose, which is actually kind of cute. She's got her little hoof raised, and she looks like, she just looks really cutesy. Her eye is painted on the other side. You can see it through her mane. You'll see it a lot better in the close-up, um, but that's that's impressive that they, that they have all the detail of painting her eye on the other side, and their cutie marks so far have been painted on pretty well. Um, she has a stand with just one little peg uh, because she is sitting, but she is so cute. And uh, as a lot of you might know, Rarity is my favorite main six pony. So excited to have Rarity, even though I knew I would get uh, all of the main six in this box at least. All right, getting into our next one. Here we have Rarity, the best main six pony. And her base has a teeny tiny little peg. I'm wondering if she'll need it though. She is sitting and her tail is pretty big. We will, we will find out together. All right, so open her up. She, yeah, she feels pretty good. Uh, here is Rarity. Let's take a look at this side first. Her cutie mark, I would have liked it printed on just slightly bigger, slightly, slightly bigger because there's a lot of area that they could cover here. It's not that bad. Her mane and tail uh, look great from what I can tell. Painting on it seems nicely done uh, or nicely printed. I'm not seeing any errors in the sculpting. Uh, it looks looks pretty good to me actually. It looks really really nice uh, which is great because she's my favorite pony. If you can see in here, it's a little hard because there's shadow and stuff, you can see that her eye is fully painted on on the other side, which is great. And then this side, her skull, the eye follows the same um, the same shape as the eye on the other side. And like this is a small detail, but it's really great. She does have her full skeleton painted on. If you move her tail slightly, you can see that leg. All the bones are bent, and there's a spine. And she's got her little hoof raised. And you can see it there. The printing for the inner inside of the ear on this one uh, and the dissection is a lot nicer I think than on the Applejack one um, but yeah pretty cute figure she can obviously sit on her own that tail is so big she's not going anywhere she is doing great uh, but you could also there is a little spot where you could stand her on her base if you wanted to but I'm going to leave that in the packaging for now. So that one is a rarity. And now on to number five. So that's four boxes so far. And number five. Ah, oh, the tape's tearing again. Oh, that left a lot of stickiness on the box. Oh well, the lids open her up. I do like that these boxes have been pretty easy to open without damaging the box as well. Um, so they'd be really nice if you do get doubles and need to gift one to a friend or something. Um, they'd be nice for that at least. Also, so far I haven't been able to tell by weight uh, what's going to be who because they're all about the same size, except Rarity was a little bit smaller. So here's our next package. Open it up. And sneak peek for you guys. Do I see pink in there? I don't know. 
Let's find out. Oh, I don't. I see. I see this pink, but we have our first double and it is an Applejack. This one is looking maybe a little bit nicer than the first one. We will see when we get her in close up. But this is uh, our second Applejack and our first double. Not too bad though. Here's our first duplicate, but we're still gonna take a look at her up close in case there is a quality difference between her and the other Applejack. Um, so we're going to get her opened up. I will not open her base or anything this time though. But we will look at the figure. She is again taped down at the bottom. I think that's just to protect the hair at the end of her tail, which it's nice that they're concerned about protecting the figures given the, the price. Um, I'm really glad that they want to keep them nice and protected. So here we have the second Applejack figure. Uh, she's looking, first glance, pretty nice. Um, again, skulls printed on nicely. Uh, her skeleton is the same yellowish color as her mane. Oh no, I'm seeing there's a bit of dirt under her hair here or paint scuffing. So there's a little defect right here under her hair and that's a shame as well as there's still the bit of extra fuzz from printing on her tail like the last one in the same places. So I would assume if you get an Applejack figure you're gonna have a couple of these little pointy bits um, sticking up from the tail. Her cutie mark again is perfect, her freckles, her eye, all great, but she does have that little defect there. Let's check out her hat. It's great. Um, yeah, so it's really just that that little defect there, and then the fact that each of the Applejack ones comes with these little pointy bits. But aside from that, very, very cute figure. I like her a lot. Same as the last Applejack one. All right, next one. We have, um, this is box number six. Whoa. Trying to get this. There we go. Box number six. Open her up. Oh, this one put the the little thing on top. That's dangerous, so you could open that before you find out who you've got. We have our little figure in here. Tear it open. Who do you guys see in there? Which one's that one? I can't tell, my viewfinder's so small, so I can't tell. Oh, it's another Rainbow Dash. Okay, okay. Our second double is a Rainbow Dash. Pretty cute, so now we have three Rainbow Dashes. Um, not too bad, this is a really, really cool uh, one of the figures. This one though, I'm a little bit worried because her wing, instead of filling up the bubble packaging up over here, it's sort of squished into this side, um, which is just like a packaging error. So I'm really hoping that the wing jointing to the figure hasn't been damaged. Sorry guys, had to fix my memory card, but we are back. Um, so as I was saying, I'm hoping that the packaging hair hasn't uh, weakened the joint where her wing meets her body, but we will look at that in close up. Um, so far her paint and everything looks great, so that's on the plus side, but I'm just a little bit worried about that. And yes, I'm going to be a little bit hard on any defects I find because these are collector's items. Time to look at our second double. This one is... The Rainbow Dash, I'm a little bit concerned about her wing, so we'll take a look at that. Here is her skeleton slide, um, similar to the last one. The painting on the inside of the ear here is really nicely done. There's a little bit of extra excess paint on this one. There's a little bit there. Um, the tail seems pretty good. What's this? There's a little bit of stickiness on there. Let's see if I can get it off. come off. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know that it's coming. There, it came off. 
so there was a little bit of stickiness on her tail, but that came off. Um, here is her other side. Her cutie mark's really nice. Her tail has a little dot right there, but you can barely see it. Uh, but her neck obviously has gotten a little bit too much paint because there is some bubbling under the neck that was not on the previous Rainbow Dash figure we looked at, and her wing is bent way this way. So the other one where it's properly, oh, I don't want to drop these, <sighs> where it's properly bent out, you can see the difference between these two figures. Um, this one looking a lot better, taken care of a lot better uh, in the packaging process. This one is a little bit squished. And I don't want to bend the wing too much because I'm afraid it's going to hurt it. Um, but it does bend a little bit. Um, and also the extra paint there. Uh, if this was the only one that I got, I would be very disappointed by uh, the extra paint and the squishing and stuff, uh, and extra paint there, extra paint on the inside of this one. So if was, this was the only figure I got, I would be disappointed, but the other one was perfectly fine. So, you know, that's <laughs> when you can't see the toy that you're buying, that can happen. But aside from that, still a really cool figure. Getting into the second row of boxes. Now, before I get into the second row, I want to mention that I uh, I bought these on pre-order, so I bought them in August. Um, they didn't ship until mid-September. At first, they were planning to ship beginning of September, then they uh, said they were going to ship in mid-September, and third, the company that they shipped with was um, it was very difficult to get a hold of them to pay the duty fee to actually get these <laughs> items to me. Um, but none of that is on the manufacturer, and I think that a lot of the difficulties are just because right now, um, you know, the shipping in the world is not great. So I actually got these about two weeks ago, um, nearing mid October. Um, so just if you are purchasing from the site, uh, obviously your wait won't be as long and it depends on where you live, but I want you to be aware that if you are purchasing this item or any other items off the Mighty Jacks website for a gift for someone, um, that you would want to do it ahead of time because it is quite the wait right now. So, whoa, I'm getting tape stuck all over my fingers. It's sticky. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, I can feel it. I can feel it. Ugh. I just don't want to get the, the the characters sticky. So here's our next box. Here's our figure. Figure on top again. And let's tear into the bag. The bags are also nice and thick. You can't see anything through them. Who's this one? We have Twilight Sparkle. All right. So here is her base and her figure. She is obviously the the most complex because she's a unicorn. Um, and she's an alicorn. Ah. She's obviously a little bit larger because she is an alicorn, just slightly. Uh, we will see a size comparison down at the desk though. Uh, and so far she is looking pretty cute, just like the rest of them. Now to take a close look at the Princess of Friendship. My nails kind of match her a little more than the other ones. And here she is in her package. She takes up a lot of room this way, uh, whereas the other ones don't as much because of the way that her wing, her wing bone is structured. It might have been cool to give them like slightly more of a bone to their wing, but I know that that's not realistic. This one also has tape on the clamshell. And let's get her out of there. So here she is out of the box. Here is her sort of normal looking side. Uh, pretty cute to start off with. Looks like a a normal sort of Twilight Sparkle toy. Oh no, what's on her tail? Look at the bottom of her tail there. There's something on it. If Let's see if I can rub it off. If not, 
Um, I'll be very, very disappointed if that doesn't come off. Oh no. Oh no. So this one has glue at the bottom, at the base of her tail here. She has a whole bunch of glue and it doesn't show up as much on camera. It's more yellowy in real life and it looks horrible and I don't know if I'll be able to get that off there. So that's really unfortunate, but um, we're gonna ignore that and continue looking at the rest of the figure. Her cutie mark again is perfect. Her eyes, super cute. Um, her little horn peeking through her hair. Her hair doesn't quite meet, which bothers me a little, because uh, in the show or anything, they don't really have those bald patches. And on other figures, I, I've never really seen one with a bald patch before. Uh, the other figures, though, haven't had that. It's just been this one so far. Uh, so that's a second sort of downside. I really like her pose. I like how it's outstretched this is. You would just have to be very careful with this bit, but it does have a little bit of, of give, so you don't have to be too, too worried. Uh, her teeth are very pronounced, which is nice. And there's her little eye socket. And her skeleton. Uh, her shoulder comes out a lot more than the other ones, too. So she looks, she has a really good look from the front as well. And there's the rest of her. I don't really have too many other complaints about the figure. Uh, the painting on her tail could be a little better. Uh, and the mane should connect, and then I'm really sad about that glue. Uh, again, I'd be a little bit disappointed if this was... Whoop. <laughs> I would be a little bit disappointed if this was the only... Uh, the only box I had bought for $13. Um, and still, I did spend $240 on this case. So, it still is a lot, but... Uh, all in all, she's still a nice figure, and from far away, you're not gonna see those things. She also can stand up on her own, which is awesome. So there is a base included, just like with all the other ones. Whoop. Base is included, but uh, she also can stand on her own. This is, I'm thinking, mostly due to her tail also touching the table. It, uh, it is allowing her to stand, which is always nice. It's always nice when they can stand on their own. Especially if you want to take photos or something. All right, next box. We have five left to go, counting down now. And so far out of the main six, we are missing Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. So we know those have to be in here somewhere. Oh my goodness, it's sticking to me. All right, here's the next one. bag on the top of the box and where's the tarot oh, here. they feel so much bigger in the bags than when you take them out it's kind of interesting so who's that one can you guys tell me can you tell it's water shy all right so the only one from the main six we haven't gotten yet is Pinkie Pie. I think the Fluttershy one uh, works just so well um, as a concept. Like this concept is is super cute. It's been applied to a lot of things before Pony, uh, but obviously I wanted the My Little Pony ones. Um, but I think this concept especially works really well with Fluttershy. I don't know why, but like Fluttershy goes super well with the uh, sort of spooky stuff and uh, skulls and things. It's sort of a natural thing as well, so I think that's why I really like Fluttershy. Um, and I'm already seeing, I'm already seeing a chip in the paint on her tail, oh no. We will look at that closer down over there. It's pretty teeny tiny, so I'll still be able to display her and everything, but that is a small defect that I can notice at least. And she uh, also comes with her stand. I had already taken her out of the little package and thought I had recorded the whole thing and I had forgotten to press record on my camera. So take two of the close-up look at Fluttershy. Um, hopefully I can remember everything I said. So here is the close-up of Fluttershy. She is absolutely adorable. Um, 
she works really perfectly with this concept like i said before the nice like pastel super girly colors uh that feature on fluttershy with the white skeleton that they chose i'm glad they chose white for this um i don't know it just like pops really well the skeleton features and it's that perfect mix of like really cutesy and girly and this is like a girly cutesy toy line with skeletons very very cool i really like that the skeleton on this one looks really good the painting on the inside of the ear for the dissection looks good there is a little bit of bleeding uh, of the white into the pink here and the pink into the white there uh, and uh, yeah that's just a couple little spots but i do want to be pretty thorough about it looking at her other side though her cutie mark is again printed on perfectly uh, her skin tone looks good, her tail and mane look really good from the side. Her mane is great, it meets in the middle as it should, there's barely a gap there, you can't really tell which is how it should be. And like Rarity, they even printed her eye on the inside of her mane, even though you can barely see it, which is great. So you can see her eye in there, peeking out at you, and then the eye socket on this side in the nice shape mirroring Fluttershy's eye shape in the show, which is awesome. Her wing is good, it feels sturdy, the paint's good, the little bone on the other side feels fine. Now I want to look at her tail, because right when I opened her up, it seems like there was a little bit of a chip in her tail, and I'm still seeing that now. So, if this will focus in, if this will allow me to focus in, there is the little chip, the little paint chip. It's pretty small, but I did notice it almost as soon as I had her out of the package. I didn't even have to uh, open up the plastic clamshell to notice it. Um, so there is a little chip in the paint. Uh, you wouldn't notice it at all from farther away. If this is just sitting on a desk, you wouldn't notice it. And it's an adorable figure and I'm gonna love it and, and keep it around anyways. But I just wanna be really thorough and show you guys any defects I find because each one of these does cost $13 and you don't even know which one you're gonna get. So I just want to be as thorough as possible so you guys know. And now we're gonna do the test to see if she will stand on her own without the base. And there she is, she's standing on her own just fine. Um, with this one her tail is really nice and really long. It is. Uh, a really good choice for this sculpt. It trails on the ground and that gives her enough weight for her to just stand without her base. But she does still come with one. And there are the little holes in her hooves to uh, stand on there. It's pretty cool looking from the bottom too. I really like this idea. Really, really like this idea. Alright, on to the next one. Alright. Next box. Get the tape off. And let's open it up. All the bags also look the exact same. They're white and they have the shiny Mighty Jacks logo printed all over them. I'm assuming this is standard pra packaging for probably all of their mystery figures. So, here's the next one. Can you tell who it is? <gasps> yes, it's a sparkly one. We got another chaser. So the two chasers you can get of the three chasers you can get, you can get the Wonder Bulls Rainbow Dash and then two sparkly chasers. So this is uh, one of the the two uh, more common chasers. This one is obviously a sparkly twilight sparkle um, and she is still printed with her skeleton and stuff. It doesn't show up as well here but I'm going to take a closer look at it and we'll see how good this looks compared to the other ones. And she comes with her stand. She's also in the same pose as the other Twilight one. It's probably a use of the exact same mold. It's just a different sort of plastic that they 
pour into it. But I'm really excited we got this because this way you guys can see the quality um, of this style as well in case you were interested in purchasing one of the chasers secondhand or if you're, you know, going to chase after the entire set yourself. I am really excited that we got one of these so I can look at and compare the plastic of this one to the plastic of the other ones. We have her base and we have the figure. Now this one is in, like I said, the same pose as the other Twilight figure before her. Um, except she is sparkly. She is very, very sparkly and she is translucent. Now the first thing I'm noticing is uh, one, I can feel the glitter texture. Now are the glitters coming off on me if I rub the tail? Are there any glitters? No? No? Okay, so the glitter is not rubbing off on me, which is really good. That means it'll stay uh, in the plastic. But I am noticing there's a little bit of glitter clumping on her tail here. There we go. Um, there's a little bit of glitter clumping. I don't think I can do anything about that. It is a shame though. This does, the glitter does, even though it's not coming off on me, which is awesome, uh, it does texture the figure. It, you can feel that sort of grainy glitter texture all over the whole figure. Um, so on this side, she is translucent. She still has uh, printed on her just in a darker color this time. She has her cutie mark printed on. Let's see if you can see it there. Focus, maybe? Is this too glittery to focus on? There we go. It's kind of hard to see, but there is her cutie mark. It's printed on there in like a dark purple. It looks more bluey on my camera. Uh, her eye is also printed on, which is a really nice detail. I like that they left the white uh, open, but they still gave her her normal eyes, so she still has the expressiveness of Twilight. Um, her horn. Her mane, there's still that gap between the two parts of her mane, but you can't really notice with the glitter figure. Um, she has a little bit of clumping down near her hoof as well. And then on this side, it is still the skeleton. You can kind of tell more from the front, but from the side, you can see there's the eye socket, little teeth, the ribs, um, and obviously none of this bit is colored in. Uh, so she is just one solid figure. She has all the same color of purple. I'm not sure if the website displayed them as having like a two-tone color or not for the sparkly figures. I can't remember, but she is all just one color with the same sort of glitter finish. Um, not a bad figure. Uh, same sort of deal as the other one. Oh, she's kind of like clear inside. You can see if you look through the base of her tail that she's got sort of a white, a white or a hollowness in there. Interesting. Interesting. Same with her face a little bit. But yeah, so that is what the glitter figures look like. She too can stand on her own. Let's put her up against the other Twilight we opened. Just so you can see how different these figures look. Now these are the chaser ones, you're not guaranteed to get these in the box, um, and they are a lot more rare to find, so you're more likely to find one of the traditional ones where um, the skeleton and guts and stuff are printed on. So that is the, the difference, the side-by-side. -side. And there is the side-by-side -side of this side. And that is the figure. So, less detail because of the painting, but the sculpt is the exact same, and it still seems like a good quality figure. The plastic feels extremely similar to the plastic of this one. You're not really getting a quality difference there. Um, and yeah, it seems like everything's in order. I can't really complain about painting or anything on this. There's a little bit of clumping in the glitter in a couple places on the tail and the hoof, but again, not very noticeable from far away. Even this one is pre probably pretty funny because from far away, uh, you wouldn't even notice that this is a skeleton pony. You'd be like, that's a Twilight with something up with it if it was on this side. And if it was on this side, you'd just be like, oh, that's just a Twilight Sparkle. Like a glittery Twilight Sparkle figure. So 
that is that one. Uh, with that, we only have three left to open, and I, I believe the only one we have left to find of the main six, which are the ones we're guaranteed to get, is Pinkie Pie. And with that, we only have three more, and we know one of these has to be Pinkie Pie. She is hiding from us. That party pony. Ooh. I'm pretty happy though with this case. So far, I'm really happy we got uh, one of the sparkly ones to show you guys. Uh, and I'm just, I'm excited to see what Pinky looks like if we find her. She, she's probably not in this box. So, whoop. Oh. Here is the package. Here is the package. I'm getting like more butterflies as we go on opening these because we're getting near the end. It's like, what if they forgot to put in a Pinkie Pie? Oh no, that'd be bad. I, I don't think they would, but I'm just nervous. <gasps> Wait, is that pink? Is that pink? Do I see pink? Is that just standard or is that funny? It is Pinkie Pie! <laughs> okay, okay. Awesome. So that is the entire set and we're still going to open up these two to see uh, if, which doubles they are or if we get the third chaser. I'm already really happy we got two of the chasers though, so that's pretty awesome. But here we have Pinkie Pie. She is looking actually really, really cute. Really upbeat. Oh, she's adorable. So far, just from a initial look, seems to be pretty good. Uh, I, I'm pretty happy about this. Here's her little stand as well. And we will look at her, the final main six pony down at the desk. Let's get a close-up look at Pinkie Pie. Here is her base, has two spots for her hooves, and here is her figure. We'll open it up. Oh my gosh. All right, so here is our Pinkie Pie. She is really cute. There is the sort of normal pony side to Pinkie Pie. Uh, really cute really expressive. I love that she has an open mouth smile for this one. Uh, it really suits Pinkie Pie. Her cutie marks printed on perfectly, just like all the other ones. Uh, her mane and tail uh, don't look like there's any defects, no extra plastic, no uh, paint defects. Uh, her eyes, again, very nice. And I like that smile. So let's turn her around and see her spooky side. So Continuing with the open mouth, uh, her mouth's more open on this one, which actually looks really, really nice. Now her cutting uh, for the dissection doesn't reach up to this ear like it does for the other ponies. I kind of like it this way though. Uh, it looks really fluid. It was a good design choice. It works well for Pinky. She has a lot of volume to her mane and tail, just as she always does. It feels really, uh, it feels really accurate to the character. Uh, and her skeleton is looking great. It's got a little bit of that yellowish white, uh, not yellow like the, not yellow like the Applejack figure, but uh, sort of the rainbow dash sort of white that they have. And her skeleton looks good. Her guts are painted on nicely. There's a bit of spray on the bones right here for her spine uh, of the blue, but not too much. Um, it would have been maybe a little bit of fun to see Pinkie Pie have a little bit more candy color to her guts, something stand out a little bit that way but it's still a really cute figure. I really love the little bones. They look so good on camera. And they're just so spooky cute. I really like them. This is a good solid little figure. The only thing we have to do is the test to see if she can stand on her own. Oh no. Pinkie Pie's tail is actually getting in the way of her standing on her own. She wants to fall one side or the other. What if I push the tail up a little bit? Okay, so if I if I move her tail just slightly, she will stand. But the tail does want to curl in a little bit, which makes her off balance. But she can stand on her own. So, so far the only pony that hasn't been able to stand on their own at all has been the Applejack figure. That's the only one of the entire set that couldn't stand on their own. Getting down to the wire. This is our 
second to last box. We only have two left. <gasps> two left. Is... Also, you could just cut this tape instead of pulling it off. It would be very, very easy, but I don't want the tape left over on my box. So that's why I've been <laughs> meticulously ripping it off each time. But uh, like, yeah, th this would be a super easy box to open for yourself. So you could keep your figure in the box if you wanted it to be kept really safe. All these boxes, the tape has come off them, no problem. They're very nice. Like all the packaging surrounding these ponies has been nice as well. There's the bottom. Here is our figure. And this one, the tear bit is a little bit smaller. Okay, we got it. I'll let you guys have a look first. And all right, so our second duplicate is a Twilight Sparkle. I guess that's kind of fitting since she is like the protagonist of the show. That's pretty cool though. We can compare her to the first one that we got down at the desk. This is our second Twilight Sparkle figure. Let's get into her and see if I have any complaints. What her quality is like. So get tape stuck all over me and more of my nails come off. All right, here we are. There's our Twilight figure. This one, at a first glance, the paint on her tail's looking a lot more clean. Uh, her skeleton looking real nice. Uh, her gut's all painted on really nicely. The paint for the dissection bit does reach a little too high on her ear, but that's super, super nitpicky. That's just a teeny tiny thing. She does not have any extra glue on her tail or her mane. It's still separated a little bit. Oh no, she has a... So this one's not perfect either. This one also has a defect. This one has a tiny little paint line right here, a tiny little paint defect uh, on her as well. So both of my Twilight figures have small defects. Actually, all three of them do, but that's okay. She still looks really cute. Cutie mark, great. Printed on great quality. Eye, great quality. Um, looks really cute from both sides. Let's see if this one can also stand on her own. Oh, this one does not want to, but I think it's mostly... She needs to be a little bit stretched. There we go. We can get her to stand on her own. The box might be helping her touch, but uh, these ones are a little bit iffy. The Twilight's a little bit iffy if you can get her to stand. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. And finally, it all comes down to this last... To wrap it up, it all comes down to this last box, um, whether or not we get the full full set or not. Uh, I'm just really happy with everything we got already, um, but yeah, we have to take a look. I wasn't going to let you guys just like, oh, we found the main six, we will stop taking a look. No, we're going to go through this entire case together. And also this gives me, um, even with the duplicates, it gives me more of an idea of their quality control and how these figures will actually look when they get to you. So here's our final figure. Anyone have a guess to who it is before we open it? Time to guess now because it is now open. And who's that? You see in there. I think I see. Oh, and it's another rarity. So our final duplicate is a rarity. So the only figure from the complete set, we didn't get the complete, complete set, but we got almost every single one in this set. So we got the main six ponies that we were guaranteed, and out of the mystery ones, which it doesn't show on this box, out of the mystery ones, we got the Enchanted Twilight and the Wonderbolts Rainbow Dash. The only one we're missing is the Enchanted Fluttershy, 
which has a very similar look to the Enchanted Twilight. Um, it is clear plastic with glitter, but it is in a different color, obviously, and in the Fluttershy mold. So that's pretty amazing. We got almost the entire set. We got super, super close. We are missing one pony from the set, uh, but I'm really excited about that. So we'll take one more look at that last rarity figure, and I'm also going to then do a size and plastic comparison to some other toys, uh, specifically pony toys, obviously. So here I have um, like some of the small G4 ponies. We have some fashion size, uh, the blind bag minifigures and a different style of sort of like more of a play figurine that has been done recently. So we're going to take a look at those ones in comparison to these. Again, keeping in mind that these are collector's items, uh, whereas these ones are toys. Um, these are collectible toys, but it's one is made specifically for the collector and the other one's made for play. So we're going to do our final comparison down at the desk and then I'll return here for my final thoughts. So here is our final double. It is a rarity. And whoop, I got a little bit excited about getting two of the chasers. I thought I might get the third, but didn't quite. So I couldn't, can't show off that one, but I can show you this rarity. Um, she is looking pretty good at a first glance, same as the last one. Her eye is still printed on very nicely. Skeleton colors, everything's in, in where it's supposed to be. Her cutie mark, again, a little bit small, but still very, very nicely printed. Uh, I can't see any paint defects on this one either, just from a first glance and the sculpt is great. I'm a little bit, I find it a little bit strange because like unicorn horns are supposed to be made of bone that they didn't do the horn uh, dissected as well for this one or the Twilight Sparkle ones, but you know that's a design choice and it's still a good quality. I just personally would have dissected the horn a little bit and uh, had the bone continue on through the horn just like they did with the wings. Aside from that, really, really cute. Still really, really happy with her. And she, of course, still sits on her own. This one's like the least likely to fall over of all of them, even if you don't use a base, just because she's sitting and uh, has a nice big tail to balance her out. Here is one of each of the eight figures we got in the Freenies Hidden Dissectables Series 1 case uh, in total. There is a possibility of nine fi different figures uh, in this case, but you're only guaranteed to get um, the basic main six figures, which would be this Applejack, this Rainbow Dash, this Rarity, this Twilight, who I just knocked over, and Fluttershy, who I also just knocked over, and <laughs> this Pinkie Pie. Um, these two figures here are the uh, two of the Chaser figures, these ones have a slightly higher chance uh, to get than the Wonderbolts Rainbow Dash, which is the rarest one. I think altogether they look really good. Um, there's like a really cute little spread here. They are pretty small and I'm about to compare them to the other ones and some of the little pieces of them are a little bit diff uh, delicate. And I did find a couple teeny tiny defects. There were no major defects except for maybe the little paint line on that one Twilight figure. There were no major defects on any of the ones that I opened, uh, which of course should be expected <laughs> given the cost of these toys and the fact that they are collector's items and art pieces instead of actual play line toys, despite the fact that they're made of plastic. Now to give you an, a better idea of scale, Obviously you've seen my hands next to these, but everything shows up a little bit bigger on camera, so I am going to just do like a little bit of a comparison between these and some of the play ponies. So for your basic play-sized pony, here we have a rarity. Um, this is the normal G4 
G4 standard size of pony before they went to their new molds. Um, and this stands just slightly taller than all of these figures. So if you have one of these or you know the size of these, because they're pretty common, um, so you'll get a figure that's just slightly, slightly smaller than one of the basic ponies. Um, we put this rarity and this rarity side by side. This one's sitting, so it's not as, as great of a comparison. But that is sort of the difference between our two rarities here. Between a play style pony and a figurine. Uh, I have actually one of each of these, so... So let's compare Twilight to her play doll. Um, now this is the unicorn, not the alicorn version, but uh, the colors on this, actually, this toy, which is produced solely by Hasbro, aren't as accurate to the show as the colorings on this Twilight here. As you can see, there's a big difference in color, big difference in the mane and tail too, and these colors are very show accurate, whereas these ones obviously are not. Also, it would have been nice if they had painted the stripe on the bottom of her tail as well. But you can never see that part when the figure is just standing there, so it's not too big of a, of a deal. We have a Fluttershy. Again, the colors on the Hidden Dissectable a lot nicer. A lot nicer and a lot more show accurate than the colors on the Playline type of doll. Uh, again, <laughs> this one has pretty neon hair and a very bright body. Whereas Show Fluttershy is a lot softer, and I've already mentioned how I just love the colors on this figure specifically. Here is a Pinkie Pie comparison. Uh, the colors on this one are actually pretty accurate, so it's not too bad. This uh, figure specifically actually has a slightly lighter body than uh, it, it would need to be accurate, accurate to Pinkie Pie but it is very, very close in comparison. Uh, this one just would be need to be a little bit darker, as you can kind of tell from the box. And finally, Rainbow Dash. Uh, this one also has pretty accurate colors, except for uh, her eye. This is, I don't know if it's entirely accurate. This one has the more of the red in the eye. This one has more of pink. And uh, yeah, but the, the coloring's pretty good. And this is obviously the size difference and the look difference between these two things. Uh, and the feelings of the plastic is actually a little bit similar to this. This one feels a little bit more rubbery. This one feels a little bit more solid as it should, but still has a little bit of malleability so that it's not gonna be easily, easily broken. Now, to fully compare the sizes, there is our, whoop, as we, as I knock over the ponies again. Um, here is our Playline size doll, and here is the fashion sized pony, so even bigger. It is, uh, this is much, much bigger than these ones. And finally, oh wait, we didn't compare Applejack, so I have an Applejack here with a hat. <laughs> Again, the Applejack from the Freenies Hidden Dissectable figure uh, has a lot more of an accurate color palette than the doll, than the Playline styled doll. Yeah. Almost forgot Applejack. Doesn't everyone? So, one more size comparison, or two more. We have the standard blind bag ponies that are put out by Hasbro. These have been put out for a really long time. They are obviously quite small, and I love how tiny they are. I love tiny toys. I would like these ones, these figurines, to be just slightly bigger. I'd love if they were the size of these, just a little bit chunkier, because they'll look better on display, but they're still pretty cute. Um, but uh, if we measure <laughs> the difference between these two ponies, this one's significantly larger than this one. This one actually looks like a baby pony or like a kid pony compared to this one, which is pretty funny. 
So that is sort of the difference. And as for figures, like the painting on these is way better than the painting on these blind bag figures. Now these figures retail for like three or four dollars a piece. These ones are 13 um, as far as mystery figures go. And these ones are a little bit squishier, more rubbery, whereas these ones, again, are more solid. The final comparison I'd like to make is uh, I got these. Uh, they're sort of play or display figures. They're nice and chunky and very good for play. Um, I got these figures of the main six recently, and I can't tell you what these retail for because I don't know, I thrifted them, but this one is a very solid chunky plastic. It is maybe even just slightly more solid than these figures. It is also a little bit bigger. Um, so although I love the colors on this Fluttershy, I love the art that went into it, I love uh, the pose. Uh, everything about it. This figure is like nice and big and chunky and it, it's pretty nice. Um, not gonna lie, and this is a pretty new figure from Hasbro. So if I'm comparing the two of these in quality, I'd say that this one, yes, it has more detail and it is a higher quality that way and it is definitely more of a piece of art. But um, this one's just a little bit more solid. Uh, gonna last you even longer. So just keep keeping that in mind if you just want them for like their normal main six sides. There are other options available if you just want them to look like normal ponies that you won't necessarily have to spend as much money. But obviously I'm spending the money for the artwork that is this line, the gimmick, and the detail that's put into every piece. Um, I did show you like some teeny tiny defects which I'm a little bit disappointed with the paint chipping and the extra like paint lines and stuff, but all in all, these are really good quality. There's barely any defects, especially compared to other toys that I've bought in the past, and they just, they look really good. Um, they're well painted. I will give you my final verdict though when we switch back to our other camera. So for my final verdict on the Freenies Hidden Dissectables Series 1, uh, put out by Mighty Jacks. Um, yeah, I think we should go through each part individually. Um, starting with the packaging, it is beautiful. Uh, these boxes are, the, one, the master box is beautiful. If you end up buying all 12, you get this box. And, uh, it's pretty. It lives up to both My Little Pony and, uh, what they're trying to do with it. It says reveal the magic on it, which is pretty cute. So the outer boxes are great, uh, the little boxes they come in, I like that they're just sealed with a little piece of tape that it's easy to peel off and the box still looks really nice so if you need to put your figures back in the box or like keep them uh, tucked away for display or even if you need to store something else in these boxes, they are really cute. They look really good and it doesn't ruin them taking the tape off, you don't have to ruin the box to open it. The bags uh, that come inside it are nice and thick, you can't peek into it, it's foil on the inside. It's very thick plastic. Yes, the plastic waste kind of sucks, but this there is not, because these come in boxes that are cardboard, there's not too, too much waste. Um, and also there's the clamshell inside that holds your pony, that'll keep them safe, that'll make sure that no parts are going to be broken off your figure if the boxes are like jostled around a bit in the mail or uh, on store shelves, it's almost like picking it up and looking at it. It's not going to be destroyed because it has protective packaging, even inside that packaging. Uh, and that's really, really nice. So packaging, pretty good, pretty good. That gets, that, that gets a good, a pretty good from me. Then we have the figures themselves, uh, which obviously is the main point. There were a few downsides to these figures. One, they are pretty small, especially for the cost. Uh, they are $13, which is a standard for art doll collectibles. It's a, it's a standard sort of price here in Canada. Uh, I'm not sure what it would be in the US, probably $10 or $11, but comparable nonetheless. Um, the, so they are a little bit shorter than they should be. I think they should have aimed for like the size of a Playline doll and just gone slightly, slightly bigger with the with the figures. It would have made them uh, more of like a real pop when you like see them on a shelf. 
Uh, the paint jobs for them, aside from a few defects on certain figures, have been pretty much flawless. I love the detail, the fact that even when there's a mane that's covering one of the pony's eyes, you can still sort of like peek in there and see the rest of their eye painted in uh, with figurines like Rarity. Um, just it's those little attentions to detail that make this like, yes, we, we've done our, our homework and our due diligence and we want to give you a good product. Uh, is what that says to me at least. The only other complaint uh, I can see with these is one, they are a mystery toy. I have complained in the past about mystery boxes. They're super fun to open and it's great when you're able to do something like buy a full case and go through it. Um, obviously that's really fun, but if you're just getting one figure, especially with things like pony, everyone has a favorite pony and so you're not guaranteed to get your favorite pony if you buy this, uh, but you are guaranteed to get a pretty cute little figure. I'm not too uh, so much sold on the enchanted like chaser figures that are in here. They are just like a little bit like glittery and and I think the fact that I can feel the rough glitter is just the one thing that, that gets to me about that, but still a nice figure like the mold for it is still the quality is there, it's the same as the other Twilight that I looked at. And then the Chaser Rainbow Dash with the Wonder Bolts outfit. This is, um, like, it makes sense to me why this is the hardest figure to get in the series because this one is just top notch for quality. The fact that they made her jumpsuit metallic, her eyes painted on under the goggles, you, like, you barely see it, but the, it's there under the goggles. And it's just like, Oh, this is a really, really great figure. This is amazing. This looks, this is the one figure that looks way better than uh, the, the in person than the display photos on the website. So I am, I'm super jazzed about this one. It is so cool. Uh, and if you can get your hands on one of these and you get one of these, this figure specifically, oh my goodness, you will be happy with it. It is a great little thing, a great little display piece. I can't wait to figure out where I'm going to put these on display. Uh, obviously somewhere where I can look at them a lot. Uh, maybe in a future set as I'm building more sets in this house. But yes, all in all, these are really quality figures. They're small on the small side, yes. They uh, are costly, yes, as almost all like adult toy collectibles are. And they are a little bit more matte uh, of a finish than obviously the pictures that they use for marketing because those pictures are uh, like 3D renders instead of the actual product. I think there should be more pictures of just like not the 3D render that looks like really plastic shiny because um, these ones are a lot more matte than a shiny plastic uh, but they look really nice and I think that they'll make great little display items. I think they look really cool. Um, they're well, as I knock Pinkie Pie over again. Um, I think they look really cool. And for someone like me who loves My Little Pony and loves like all things cutesy and toys and things like that, um, the fact that they are, are cute like that and then they also encompass uh, the creepy side, the like dissected, weird, a little bit like uh, like gross or shocking. Uh, I really love that. Obviously these were a no-brainer for me to buy because for me I love My Little Pony. It was a big thing that got me back into art and back into cartoons and uh, back in it helped. It was part of me getting into toy collecting. So it's a big part of my life and so is uh, so are alternative subcultures. Uh, if you've been a viewer for a while then you'll know that I'm part of the goth subculture and I, my entire life since I was a small kid I have loved all things creepy. I love cute things and I love creepy things. I love them both um, and this is just a great amalgamation of those two things. It is creepy and it is cute and I love it. It's just like me. It's how I feel like the cute side is on more on the inside for me and then the creepy side is more on the outside, but you know, it's the, the split. The split is amazing and I love it. The last thing I'm gonna answer uh, for a question about these toys is, uh, are they good enough? Like, are they, is, are they sturdy enough for play? I would say actually kind of, yeah. I think that these would even stand up to being played with. I wouldn't buy them for a kid because one, they're too expensive for that and two, that's not their purpose. 
but you know if you had a kid who was like 10 or older uh, or even and they were just like really into that creepy that creepy cute stuff like I was uh, and they were that they saw these and they really wanted one you're like oh they're just gonna break it in five minutes like no it's not it these these probably will not break very easily um, even me having to like squish the little rainbow dash wing back into place it was totally fine so yeah I would say uh, all in all it is a little bit pricey I do think that these are overpriced just because they're mystery toys uh, because of the fact that they're mystery toys and they're very small I think that all uh, all these sort of like collectible uh, mini box toys there is the quality there which is awesome but the fact that they're $13 a figure here if they were $10 a figure I would totally get it um, eight to ten dollars I think is the range that I'd be most comfortable paying for them uh, but 13 is not like way out there they're not like way overcharging you and especially if you just want one like one little skeleton pony for your desk that's not so bad it's like a really cute little thing and it's really unique all in all I am really happy with these figures I I think that they're well done any little defects are not that bad they're pretty negligible and I would say they're they're worth having uh, with that said I would like you guys to know let me know what you think of these figures down in the comments below I would also love if you would let me know what your favorite one was from this video my favorite to my shock was the 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 Wonder Bolt Rainbow Dash it's an amazing figure it's so good if they just put out that figure alone and you were guaranteed to buy it I'd say like go out and buy it now because that is so worth your money and it's a gorgeous little figure but uh, yeah like let me know let me know what your favorite was my second favorite would be the Fluttershy one uh, to probably no one's surprise uh, even though Rarity is my favorite main six pony but I want to know what you guys think of toys like these I also like really want to know what you think of this formative video I don't do too many reviews on this channel but I have done some in the past and I'm obviously I had to do a review of these when I bought them but I want to know. I want to know what you guys think. I want to know if you guys like them. Uh, and yeah, any feedback is appreciated. I read all your comments. I love responding to them. So any feedback you give me, even if you don't want to write a comment, it's just liking or disliking the video, lets me know what comment, not comment, lets me know what content to make in the future that you guys will enjoy. Uh, aside from that, I put out videos every single week, mostly focused on toys, art, and thrifting. Um, I have an Instagram where I collect toys and I put out my own digital art uh, and physical art which you can also follow it's always linked in the description down below if you liked this video consider giving it a like giving it a comment if you really really liked it maybe check out another video of mine if you also enjoy that one maybe consider subscribing it is free and aside from that I hope you guys are having an awesome day wherever you are in the world uh, good luck in your future toy hunting adventures and keep playing by your own rules, guys. Bye.